The Young and the Restless Spoilers Chance Chancellor and Daniel Romilotti had been piecing together the mystery of Heather's death for weeks. The investigation had brought them more questions than answers, and the latest clue, a phone, had the potential to be a turning point. Someone had found Heather's phone and wanted to return it, but the phone's messages were even more suspicious. Before Heather's death, a message had been sent saying that Heather wouldn't be coming home. This raised an immediate red flag for Chance. Who had sent that message? Heather? Or was it someone using her phone to throw the investigators off track? As a seasoned detective, Chance's instincts kicked in. He knew that the phone held critical evidence, and with the tools at his disposal, he quickly traced its current location. To his surprise, and shock, the phone was pinging from Sharon Newman's house. This discovery turned everything upside down. Heather's phone being at Sharon's place couldn't be a coincidence, and it sent Chance into a whirlwind of suspicion. When he arrived at Sharon's house, it didn't take long for Chance to find the phone. It was hidden inside Faith's bag, something that didn't add up to Chance. Faith was just a young girl, how could she be involved in a murder? But Chance's training and experience as a detective told him one thing, the evidence was pointing directly at Faith. Heather's phone, the suspicious messages, and now the fact that it had been found in Faith's possession, it was all too much to ignore. With a heavy heart, Chance made the difficult decision. He had to arrest Faith. Though it seemed improbable, the law was clear. The evidence needed to be followed, and as far as he could see, Faith was now a prime suspect. The police swooped in, taking Faith away in handcuffs, her eyes wide with confusion and fear. She had no idea what was happening, no understanding of why she was being accused of something so horrible. I didn't do anything, she cried, I don't know how that phone got in my bag. Chance, though torn, maintained his professionalism. We'll get to the bottom of this, he reassured her, though his own doubts were beginning to gnaw at him. Deep down, he couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Faith, for all her innocence, seemed like the wrong target. But the evidence was undeniable, for now. Sharon's silence, a mother's guilt and fear. While all of this was happening, Sharon watched in silence. She stood frozen, her heart breaking as her daughter was led away in handcuffs. The weight of the situation pressed down on her, and yet, she couldn't bring herself to speak. Sharon had never been one to shy away from defending her children, but this time was different. Fear gripped her, a fear she couldn't quite explain. The fear wasn't just about Faith, it was about herself. Sharon knew more than she was letting on, and now she was caught in the middle of a nightmare she had helped create. As the police took Faith away, Sharon's mind raced. She knew where the phone had come from. Sharon herself had placed it in Faith's bag, but she hadn't meant for it to go this far. It was supposed to be a way to hide the evidence, to keep the heat off her back while she figured out what to do. But now, her desperate attempt to protect herself had backfired, and it was her own daughter paying the price. Sharon couldn't believe what she had done. She had placed the evidence in Faith's possession without thinking about the consequences, hoping to buy herself time. But now, Faith was in jail, and Sharon was too terrified to come forward. The guilt was suffocating. Sharon had always been strong, but now, for the first time, she felt like a coward. She was too scared to admit what she had done, too scared to risk her own freedom. But how could she stand by and let her daughter take the fall for her mistake? Faith's plea, an innocent heart in the eye of the storm. At the police station, Faith sat in a cold, empty cell, her mind racing with confusion. She couldn't understand why any of this was happening to her. She kept replaying the events in her head, how could the phone have ended up in her bag? Who was framing her? The fear of being accused of a murder she didn't commit was overwhelming. All she could do was keep telling anyone who would listen that she was innocent. Chance visited her in the holding cell. His heart ached as he saw the fear in her eyes. This wasn't right, but he had no choice but to follow the evidence. Faith, he said softly, I know this is hard, but we need to let the investigation play out. If you didn't do this, the truth will come out. Faith looked up at him, tears welling in her eyes. Someone is framing me, Chance. 
I don't know why or how, but I didn't do this. I didn't kill anyone. Her plea was sincere, but for now, there wasn't much chance could do. The evidence was stacked against her, and until more information came to light, Faith would have to remain in custody.